Okay, it's a wonderful life. Welcome, guys. Wow, it's a lot of uh, people here today. It's great to see you all. Welcome, guys, to our special conference uh, with uh, Teresa Snyder. It's uh, the last one was just awesome, awesome. A lot of people uh, ask questions, and you will have the opportunity. To ask a question uh, to Teresa, and uh, uh, I hope that you um, have a, a good microphone and a good camera. And uh, I want to start uh, first of all before we start uh, the the conference and the interview with uh, Teresa. Uh, I want to to give you some directions. Uh, how to operate this uh, co this conference room? Uh, I see that uh, uh, most of you or part of you uh, know how to do it. I see a heart marks and go <laughs> good for you, and uh, I see a smile, and and it's great. And uh, in uh, uh, Max was just raising his hand. Uh, I hope you 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 don't have something to say, and uh, or, or if yes, so please tell me. <laughs> okay, so how do how do how do we do that? Uh, you have my actions. Okay, it's a heart icon on the above of the screen. Uh, you just click on it, and then you have my actions. You can raise your hand. You can applaud. You can just. Uh, Sign to speak louder, softer, laugh. Okay, I hope you will laugh a, a lot here, guys, and uh, you will have fun and smile. Love, show me your love. <laughs> show me your love, and don't be sad. Okay, I hope you do, you don't uh, use this icon. <laughs> okay, so I see that everything, everyone here, uh, smiling. It's great with a lot of love. <laughs> okay, so you got the point. Um, okay, uh, guys, if you want to chat, okay, I see that everyone got the the idea. Just click on the chat tab, and you can uh, write your questions here. Okay, uh, uh, in during the 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 interview with Teresa. I can't uh, open your microphone. We will do it at, at the end of the interview. I will open your microphone, and you can just ask questions. If you don't want to ask questions, it's okay. If you don't want to speak, you can just write it down on the chat, and I will ask Teresa your questions. Okay, uh, great. So. Um, before we start, I want also to uh, tell you a joke. Are you ready to 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 smile? <laughs> I hope you will smile. And uh, oh, sorry, guys. I, I you can see me right now. Uh, my camera was off. Sorry for that. Um, are you ready to smile? Uh, I'm I'm going to. Uh, good to see you here. Okay. Uh, I see you are chatting here. Um, okay, guys, I want to start with a joke, and uh, I hope you will smile and you will laugh. A couple, a married couple, uh, get into a bank, and right after they they got into the bank, a rubber man. You know what? What is a rubber man? It's a a rubber man. It's a it's a guy that wants to take all the money from the bank. Okay. He just go after, just uh, get into the bank after this couple and go to the bank man and uh, say to him, just uh, took off his gun, aim it to his face and right when he's just aim the, the gun to his face, his mask just fall, <laughs> okay? And uh, he just uh, wanted to say to the man 
give me all the money, but the mask fall. So he asked him, did you see my face? So he said to him, yes, I can see your face. Boom! He killed him. And go to the other one. It was a girl. So, uh, and ask her, did you see my face? Are you seeing my face? Uh, yes, I can see your face. Boom! Killed him. Killed her. Uh, then he go to the husband, uh, you know, the couple that uh, just, just get into the line, and uh, he asked him, did you see my face? He, saw, he said to him, no, but my wife did. <laughs> Okay, I hope you will laugh, <laughs> laugh. <laughs> um, okay, thank you, Domenico. <laughs> um, let's start, guys. Let's start. So, what we will have today? We will start the introduction. Okay, I will introduce myself, and of course, Teresa will introduce herself, and she will tell us about a little and uh, <laughs> okay Domenico only married men can catch it <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> there is something on it and we will t we will talk about why is it important to read native speakers books okay I will show you uh, the um, I will show you a, a part of AJ video that is talking um, about uh, some rule. You will see it. Then we will start interview with Teresa. Uh, presents. You are going to get presents. And we will start uh, the questions. Okay. I will open your microphone and you can uh, ask your question. And if you want want to speak, you can just write it down. Okay, I just want to say uh, something that uh, I got your mails. Okay, I see that uh, you opened my mails and some of you just uh, replied to my mails. And I just want to say, guys, I'm not your teacher. Okay, I really don't, I'm not your teacher. I just like you because uh, most of you call me teacher. And uh, you, we have only one teacher guys and it is AJ AJ is our teacher and I really don't claim to be your teacher I just uh, my job is actually to push you to speak okay to push you to speak and to improve and practice because I believe that uh, listening to AJ and speak here is the most is the it's the winning formula to to improve our uh, English. Okay, so uh, I'm not your teacher, guys. Okay, uh, I'm just like you. Uh, okay, let's start. Sorry about uh, that we uh, delayed here, and uh, let's start. Okay. So uh, I guess that most of you know me, but uh, if not, I'm going. I want to introduce myself. Okay, so I'm married uh, with beautiful uh, girl, and I'm married, and that's why I uh, <laughs> tell you this joke. And I hope that uh, my wife didn't uh, hear me. <laughs> and um, uh, I lead business owners to attract customers from Facebook and increase their incomes. I really like to do it and to help as many as business owners on the country and all over the world to, to get more customers from Facebook and to increase their incomes. Uh, I really like to dance on my free time. Uh, if you don't know, I'm dancing uh, almost 10 years and in the five last years, as I just started to, to teach, you know, a wedding dance and uh, couples that uh, want to dance. And I really, really like it. Uh, it's it's the quiet of uh, my oxygen, you know. Uh, I really uh, like to surf on the sea, skiing on the snow, of course, and 
to read personal development books. You can see all my pictures from home, my hobbies here, and my family too. Uh, so this is this was a short uh, introduction about me and Teresa. Are you with us, Teresa? Where are you? Turn on my microphone. There. Did you turn on my microphone? There you go. Okay. Great. Uh, nice to hear you, uh, Teresa, but I can't see you. Where are you? I'm here. I can see me. Yes? Okay. I see only yeah, the... You can see me. Okay, guys, can you see Teresa? Please check, uh, write me on the chat. Hi, Dominico. And yeah. Okay, great. Image freeze. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay. Just the sofa. Oh no, Jeff. <laughs> yes, that's what I, I there see. Yeah, Catherine can see. There you go. Okay. I'm yeah. invisible, huh? Oh, I like that, being that thin. <laughs> I'm transparent. Yay. <laughs> okay, now I can see you. It was a delay. Oh, looking great. Oh, I there you go. Okay. <laughs> you, I like the red. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's my color, you know. It's a power color. I agree, I agree. <laughs> you know, it's a, it, it's a, it's very marketable. Uh, I, I just use this uh, color, you know, marketing uh, things and uh, red headline, and it's really, really strong. Right. <laughs> uh, okay, great. So uh, definitely. Well. I'm Yes, I, I'm. Uh, we, uh, first of all, I must say that we are happy to have you here again. Okay, but the last conference was awesome, and we really, really enjoy. And uh, so, please tell us about a little about you. Well, let's see. I'll try and tell you a little bit, and then maybe a little bit more for those of you who were here last time. But I'm a writer. That's what I consider myself as an author, although I do hold down a full-time job. But um, I was raised in a really large family. Um, there were never less than 10 of us in the house at one time. I'm the only girl rotten. Um, I had two natural-born brothers, and then I have 23 foster and adopted brothers. Wow. So there's a lot of fuel for writing. <laughs> right. There's a lot of fuel for writing, um, given their experiences and the people that I lived with and everything. We moved around a lot when I was younger. Um, lived in 25 different places in the 20 five years that I lived with my parents. And since then, I've moved another four times. But Oregon is where I live now. I've lived here since 1970. I love the green. The green is so beautiful. And um, I think it probably will live here forever. I live with my dad and our cat, Jewel, and a beautiful garden that if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, you'll see all kinds of pictures of it. Wow, it was a great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and I used to dance back in the disco days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so actually, uh, I want to tell the guys, uh, with your permission, um, Teresa, uh, why actually we are here. Why is it important to read native speaker books? And uh, I ask you guys, uh, I, I, I hope that uh, you all know AJ, if, and if not, I want to, to uh, know him, okay, to let you uh, know him, and um, to tell you about AJ rule number six, okay? So, uh, let's see a part of AJ video about rule number six. Hi, it's AJ, and welcome to rule number six. 
So what's number six? Number six is this. Only use authentic, real English materials. What does that mean? Well, put another way, don't use textbooks. I talked about this already when I was talking about throwing away your grammar books. But really, you need to throw away all of your textbooks. All of them. Get rid of them. They're horrible. They're boring. You know they're boring. They're useless. You know, get rid of all the grammar textbooks, all those with the little fake, you know, conversations in them and all the nice little graphics and pictures they put in to try to make them seem interesting when, in fact, it's really boring. Because what do those textbooks really have? they got a bunch of fake conversations with boring actors reading them. And then they have a bunch of little boring activities and drills that are supposed to help you improve your communication. It's all bad. It's not going to help you. What you need to do instead is use only authentic, real English materials. What does that mean? Well, when I say real, here's what I mean. I mean... The best materials are the ones that are for native speakers. In other words, books and audios and videos that are made for Canadians, Americans, British people, Australians. They're not made for foreigners learning English. They're made for the people actually living in those countries. That's a real, authentic material, book, CD, video, whatever. Okay, so uh, this was our great teacher, uh, AJ, and the Max, I agree with you, is just, is, AJ is rock, and uh, I like his energy uh, <laughs> a lot, and um, okay, let's go back to, uh, to the questions, Teresa, are you still with us? Can you hear me? I am here. I'm here. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so, uh, what do you think about uh, this uh, AJ rule number six? <laughs> I think he has it right on the head. Nail, nailed the head, as they say. Um, the thing is, is that you need to read and learn like an English child would read and learn. If you learn out of textbooks, you tend to do more memorization than you really learn. I remember when I took German, there's a whole bunch of things that come back to me, but they're phrases that are out of the textbook. They're not necessarily real speaking type of German that you would use. They're just phrases like, uh, wann werden wir losfahren, you know, which is, you know, where are we going to go next? Because that was something that we memorized in the textbook because that was a question that you might ask somebody if you were traveling, that kind of thing. I know how to ask for the bathroom, you know. I know how to ask for a glass of water. But as far as really speaking the language, I can't do that anymore. And... The things that I remember are those set phrases, those pat phrases, they call them. Whereas if you read, if you learn by reading English, and like an English child would read, then you're going to learn all of the words that you need, and you're going to be able to speak it a whole lot better. Okay, so uh, thank you, Teresa. I guess that you answered this question, too. Uh, but uh, can you tell us uh, uh, how to use books in the most effective way? Well, I agree with AJ. I think that the most effective way is if you can have an audio book where you can li listen to it and then have an e-book or a regular book that you can read along with the audio book. So you see it in the printed form but then you also hear the correct pronunciation of the book. So that's one of the reasons that we're meeting here is because I do have an 
audio book and then I have an ebook and you can do that. You can listen to it and you can also read it so that you can see what it looks like in the printed form. Because not only are you learning to speak English, but you also are learning to read and write English. I know uh, Domenico, if I'm pronouncing that right, was talking last time about how he really wants to write. And so this helps you because you see it in the written form, but you also hear it. Great, great. I actually agree. It, uh, it makes sense to, to listen and to read in the same time. Okay. So uh, AJ suggests us uh, that we keep a journal. What do you think about it? But well, I actually... I went to his website and I watched part of his program. There's an episode six that he talks about journaling. And, and he talks about the fact that when you journal, like a diary, and I agree with him totally on that. When I was younger, in my junior high school years, maybe even a little bit in my high school years, I kept a I kept a diary and that's your emotions that's things that are troubling you and worrying you um, you know your everyday things that your cat did this really cute thing the other day but a journal a journal is more focused you have goals that you talk about to yourself that you you tend to um, make more clear to yourself as you write about them there's there's a purpose to the journal in the fit, sense that it puts down your ideas and makes them become more cohesive. Cohesive is a, maybe not a word that you're familiar with, but it means that it makes it more firm in your mind exactly what you're talking about or thinking about. So when I journal, a lot of mine is about the goals that I want to be a writer, that I want to hone my trade so that people will want to read me more. Um, some of my things are about my family life because being I'm my father's caregiver, he's 87 years old and I was my mother's caregiver for 15 years before she passed away two years ago. And so there's a lot of turmoil in my brain and emotions that are going on and if I put them down on paper it gets it clearer in my mind how I want to proceed with things. What's the best next step to do in order to accomplish what I need to accomplish? And I think that's what a journal is. And when you journal and you're new like you folks are to English it helps you with your phraseology, the way that you actually put the words down. Because a lot of you have the correct words, you just put them in the wrong order because you're translating from your native language to English. So you'll get things just a little bit backwards from what we would actually speak it in. And so I think when you start writing it down, and then as you read, you also see that over and over again. And that's the power of reading, is that you see that pattern that the words take that you normally wouldn't see when you translate it, and you translate it directly from your language to English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, Theresa, I don't know if uh, everyone here knows uh, what is a journal? Can you please uh, tell us? Well, this is my current one that I have that I started for the Effortless English. And it's just a spiral bound... Whoops, let me see. I've got to figure out how the camera works. So there you go. <laughs> it's a spiral bound book that I made in the, in the actual office because I work in a print shop full time. And it's got all the interesting things in here. And I have my notes there from episode six, you know, that I put in there so that I would know. And, um, but I have, I probably go through a journal, oh, a journal a month or so, 
because I, because I'm a writer, I use mine maybe a little bit differently than you would in the sense that I also put down phrases that people say that catch my ear that I think, ooh, that would be good as a character in a book. Or I see somebody on the bus and they look just a certain way, the way they're dressed really tells me, I mean, I can fashion a whole story just by looking at how they're dressed. So I might put down, well, he wore this hat and he had this kind of a beard and, you know, he had this kind of a coat on so that when I go back to create the character, I have that in my mind and everything. Sometimes, like, I'll see a great cloud formation and I'll think, well, how would I put that down in words so that people could picture that same cloud the way I'm seeing it now? So it helps me to tune my words a little bit better instead of my phrasing like you folks would be working on. Yes, I agree that uh, people think in pictures and uh, not in words. And it's very, very right. important to describe the, t the picture that you want uh, uh, the other side will see. It's very, very uh, right. interesting. And uh, tell me, so what are the differences between journal and diary? I see that uh, people asking here about a diary. Right. I, I think a diary is more the day-to-day -day activities that you do. For instance, um, maybe you worked in the garden and you planted flowers and you're, you put it in your diary so that you know to go back and look in three months to see if those flowers came up or not. Or maybe your cat did something really cool. Or maybe your child had a cute little phrase that they did. Or, oh, they began to walk today. You know, they took their first step. And so then that would be something you'd put in your diary because that's a personal item that's a day-to-day -day thing. I think your journal is more long-range so that you're talking about your goals, you're more focused on this is what I want to accomplish. Like you would talk about the fact that you're learning English and maybe you made this great connection with this person today who helped you learn that this phrase was better than the way you phrased it before. Or, or maybe you're talking about, I would like to be a great salesman someday, and this is how I want to accomplish those goals. First, I need to learn how to speak English really well, and I'm using it through the Effortless English. But it helps you focus better so that you accomplish your goals that you're headed for. So. Um Actually, um, is everyone can write a journal? It's a, it's a kind of a daily newspaper? What is it? Well, everybody can write one. And I don't think it's a daily newspaper, because I think the daily newspaper would be more like your diary would be. I think with the journal, I write every day in it. And the things that I write refer to items in my life that help my writing because my goal is always to better my writing, always to make it fuller and, and make, breathe life into it so that people will want to read it. So my goal is always to put down things that are associated with that and with that goal. Um, I put down how I'm going to market the books on Twitter, how I'm going to um, how I'm going to use Facebook to actually get people to come to this effortless English conference. You know how I'm going to use Twitter to do that. How I might um, encourage AJ to suggest using my books, which he has. That kind of thing. So that there's always a focus to the journal of what you want to accomplish. It's the end product that you're working toward. Okay. Does that help any? <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's very interesting. So uh, I can actually can write um, a journal to how to um, get some uh, more uh, customers from the business owners. I can do it? 
Is, is it right? Sure, sure. It's a practice. Oh, sure. It's and a I practice think, guide. I think the thing, like a guide, right? Yeah. And the thing is, is that it's what's important to you. It's your most important things that you want to do. If your family is important to you, you know, if if somehow maybe, you know, the the thing is, is that. Um, you want to better yourself because you want to bring your family situation up better, then that's what you should focus on in your book. Or if um, maybe you want to travel, your dream in life is to travel all over the world, then that's what you want to put in there, that you want to talk about where you want to go and how you want to get there and 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 what if you want to go by train or plane or bus or whatever and and why you want to go there but the thing is is that it's the thing that's most important to you that's what the journal should be and it should be what's focused and i think for you folks it it doesn't have to be one item it can be several things it can be well i want to learn better english so that I can get a better job, so that I can get my family, you know, in a better situation. So it can be it can be multi layered in there, but it it by writing down your ideas, not only does it help your writing, but it also helps you focus your mind so that you'll accomplish your goal easier. Okay, great. Wow, I can ask you a lot of questions about it, but I really want to let uh, others uh, to, uh, <laughs> to speak. So let's go on to other question. Uh, do you write full-time or do you still hold down a day job? Oh, I wish I could say that I write full-time, <laughs> but I don't. I, I actually run the print shop at the local community college. And so I'm in charge of doing all the bookstore packets, all of the programs for all of the different performances, both theater and visual arts and music. We do all of the posters on campus. We do all the banners that fly. Everything that is printed on campus, we do. So it's nice because I get to get into the graphics and the printing, and I get to print my own books if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really connect that uh, uh, to. It's quite connect that uh, to the, to your uh, writing. It's uh, it's the same. Uh subject let's say definitely <laughs> definitely it's just it's just a corner of it which is really nice so that I can I can experience that my job prior to this was in marketing so that helps too all of all of the different um, jobs that I've done in the past I'm finding that they're all becoming very cohesive meaning bringing it together once again very cohesive with um, being an author. I, I did marketing, so now I have to market the books because I'm my own publisher being on Amazon. And um, I, I run the print shop, so I know how to do print and graphics. And then way back when, when I was in high school and college, I was a theater major. So I actually acted. I was an actress. And so it's nice because that makes me feel more comfortable talking to you and all of these other people who are chatting to me on the side here. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's uh, talk about your writing. Uh, tell us about your writing, Teresa. Well, I noticed that Monica asked about, is there any difference between the language that I'm talking, speaking now, and what everyday life is like with my friends or my books, for instance? And no, there isn't any difference. I, I speak the same no matter what. I might stop to tell you the definition of a word that I think maybe you wouldn't be familiar with, like cohesive, if I didn't know if you knew that or not. But um, basically, this is how I talk all the time. <laughs> and um, I don't have a lot of slang in my speech because I don't, I'm not from the southern states and I'm not from the northern states. And so the middle states are a little less there's a 
viewless idioms, they call them, which are unusual things like uh, jot that down in your book. Jotting down in your book means make a note of it, you know, put it down in your book. Well, I might say that because that they would say that here. But down in the southern states, for instance, my mother used to say, um, let me think of a phrase. We used to say, what's for dinner? And she'd say, win pudding and walk about sauce. Now, that sounds like a really stupid little thing, right? Win pudding and walk about sauce. But down in the south, when your mom doesn't want you to mess with her and she's busy in the kitchen, she says, get out of here. We're going to have wind pudding and walk about sauce. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of those type of phrases. So basically what I'm speaking really is what I'm speaking here. And the books, these that you're looking at the covers now, uh, the dragon books, they're the Farloft Chronicles. They're written, were originally written for middle schoolers, which is 9 to 13 year old students. But I try not to talk down to middle schoolers because I think they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. They definitely are smarter with the computer than I am. And so these books are, I think, fun for everyone. I have a lot of people on Twitter who follow me, and they read these books, and they're adults. And then once they've read them, they think, oh, well, this would be cool. I'll read it to my son or my daughter, this kind of thing. I also have a group of science fiction books that are a little higher up on the language, which they're what they call young adult. So they're 13 to about 19 or 20 year olds they're geared toward. But once again, adults, full adults and elderlies and everybody are reading those. And then I have one paranormal, which is kind of like, you know, vampires and shapeshifters and that sort of thing. And it's my latest one, and it's a lot of fun. And um, then I have a memoir, which is about me taking care of my mom and dad. So if you have elderly folks in your household or if you have your mom taking care of your grandparents or something like that, they might find it interesting. But all of my books are character driven. They they don't have a lot of technology in them so that you don't have to be constantly referring to your dictionary to go, oh, what's a hyperdrive or what's this or that or the other. It's not a lot of tech I call it techno babble, you know, like you have in Star Trek, you know, the da 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 da, da <laughs> did to the you know, it I, I don't do a lot of that. So I think you guys are going to find it interesting. And the first book, The James and the Dragon, the one there with the green cover, I have that in an audio form, and it's free. So you can go to my website, you can download it, and then you can get the ebook, and you can read along with it and listen to it to hear the pr correct pronunciation of it. Yes, okay, I see a lot of questions here, guys. You're, you're great. You're asking a lot of questions. It's great to see it. And don't worry, uh, uh, we are going to answer all your questions. Uh, please write it uh, down and you can also uh, speak with Teresa and ask these questions. Uh, okay, so um, let's go to the other question. Uh, Teresa, are there other books in in the series you said that uh, it's a uh, sci fiction sci fictions and uh, there are other right. other books and um, please tell tell us about uh, if there is altogether there are five fantasy dragon books in the Farloft Chronicles and um, the reason that they're dragons is because dragons are just really popular and Farloff talks. And so it's, um, it's an interesting book. I think that you would find that not only is it character driven, but all of those books have a lot of heart to them. They're, there's a lot of inner wisdom about being kind to your fellow man, being loyal to your friends, not stealing. But it's not a preaching book. It's more of a teaching type book. So those are good. And then the science fiction, there's currently six of those in the series. 
And there's going to be a seventh one here soon. There's also going to be another dragon book soon. I'm about halfway done with it. And um, then there's just one in the paranormal at the moment, but there's going to end up being at least three in that. And then there's one of the memoirs left. Okay, so I can recognize a lot of uh, genres here. Uh, what genre would you say your writing is? Well, definitely the fantasy, which is the five Farloff books, the science fiction, which is the six Star Traveler series, and paranormal, which is the new one. with It's got a shapeshifter in it, a guy who shifts into a wolf whenever he's um, in a different uh, situation. And the fun thing about that is that the girl that he loves loves him as a wolf, but she doesn't know that he's also a shapeshifter. So as a human, she's not very fond of him. So he has, he has trials that he needs to get over. <laughs> and then the memoir is just, it's, it's a nonfiction, and it's about me and my parents and a baby boomer, because that's what I am, becoming a caregiver, basically, or kind of inheriting their parents. People have kids. I have my parents instead. <laughs> Okay, and uh, uh, tell tell us, uh, Teresa, do do you use in uh, in your old genres uh, the same uh, language like you speak with us right now, or is is it a, a high language? You know, um, no, I I think it's basically the way I'm speaking to you now. I I. Like I said, I don't like a lot of technology and everything in my books. I like them to, I like you to get involved with the characters. There's nothing that makes me feel better than to have one of my readers say, oh, you brought me to tears, or I felt so bad when this character left that character, or oh my goodness, you killed my, okay, I got to tell a short story here. My older brother used to drive truck. And so he was a truck driver, went on long, long trips. And so he said, I don't have time to read your science fiction. And I said, well, then I'll put it on tape. You know, I'll, I'll sit with the tape recorder and I'll tape it. This is back in the old days with the cassette tapes, you know. And so I sat there and I read it and, oh, you know, ambulances go by and I'd have to back up and get the sound of the ambulance out, you know, or, you know, the, something else would happen, a big plane would fly over and it'd make noise and I'd have to back up and record it over again. I took hours to record these books, okay? So he gets to a certain point and I'm sending him the tapes and everything and he's listening to them and as he's driving his truck and so he says, uh, he gives me a call at one point in time, and he says, Theresa, I hate you. And I said, what are you talking about? And he says, he says, do you know how long Jake dies? That's one of the characters in the book. And I said, no. And he says, he dies for 35 minutes. He says, I'm driving around in the truck. Tears are streaming down my face, and people are staring at me going, what's that truck driver crying for? And he said, all I had was a napkin. I didn't even have a Kleenex. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the reaction that you want as an author. You want people to be involved with the characters. You want them to really love them, and when something happens to them, you want them to feel it. <laughs> wow, so you're really good. <laughs> yeah. If you make him uh, <laughs> act like this, you, you you're really good. <laughs> okay, I see that. Uh, and, and yes, yes, uh, Teresa, excuse me. I see that. I see that Dominico asked me if I still have the cassettes. No, believe it or not, they were burned in a fire at his house, wow. and I just I almost cried then. <laughs> Wow. Okay, I see that uh, Domenico and uh, Monica uh, just uh, read your books. It's go it's great to see it. Uh, wow. Uh, okay. So the next question is. Okay, guys, I'm going uh, to open your microphone soon. Um, I know that you're anxious. You are hungry. To, to speak with Teresa. 
I can see it on the chat. And uh, okay, so Teresa, what inspired you to start writing? Well, I'll make this real quick so we can get to the chat. Um, I've always written. Ever since I was a kid, my mom said she spent more on stamps for me because I had a ton of pen pals. I had 36 pen pals that I used to do long handwriting back in the snail mail times. And um, I wrote my first book in junior high school during uh, recess on the bleachers out in the class. It was called The Fifth Beetle. It was about another member of the group of the Beatles. Um, but I really wrote my first book the Star, in the Star Traveler series called The Helovite War in 1990. And the reason was because I broke my foot. And they, the doctor told me there's a direct ratio of staying off your feet to how much time it's going to take to heal. And while I was sitting there, all the stories that through my life I had told myself in my head, or maybe even out loud at night, you know, I'd lay in bed when I was a little kid and I had this set of characters that I'd always talk about. And those stories all came together during that time of sitting there and I wrote that book and that's what started it all. When I finished that book, I thought, okay, that's the end of it. I went to bed that night and when I woke up the next morning, both of the main characters were going, oh no, you can't leave us stuck on this planet. Please, please don't leave us stuck on this planet. And so I started the second one. By the time I got halfway through the second one, I knew it was going to be a third. In the second one, I introduced a really cool character, and I thought, ooh, you know, what kind of an environment would he come from? And I thought, oh, I'll write a book about that. And that was the fourth one. So it, it just one thing kind of snowballed to the next, and it just keeps going. My imagination is endless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where do I get my ideas? Um, I get my ideas a lot from current events. For instance, in book the book that I'm currently writing that's on my blog, which you'll get the tag to this when we get to the last slide, but I'm writing um, a new science fiction, and it was based on three or four ideas that we think of in our society now. One is everybody, every culture practically, has dragons in its background. You know, the Chinese have their Chinese dragons. The UK has their dragons that look kind of Western dragons. There's dragons in almost everything. There's dragons in the Japanese culture. So usually when you have something that's so predominant like that in the mythology, there's some kind of basis for it way back when, you know, just like with uh, vampires, you know, there really was a Count Dracula way back when. And um, King Arthur, they really, they do believe that there was a king way back when that Arthur was based on. So what happens, okay, now we're getting into sci-fi now. What happens if you have a dragon in your culture and you kill it off because dragons are bad and they eat people, okay? But the thing that you don't know is that within your culture, you have two different kinds of people, two different species, but they look the same, like Naom and me, okay? But Naom's, he's cool, you know, he's a good dude and everything. But I'm cannibalistic. If you don't watch out, I'm going to eat your kids, okay? So what the dragon was doing is he was smelling on these people who ate the kids. He was smelling that they smell different because they eat other of these aliens, okay? So when you killed him off, okay, you've taken him out of the ecosystem and everything, and so now you've got these cannibalistic things that are eating the people all the time. And maybe they're like taking over the government. You know, maybe they're going to get you. So that's what I based it on is that whole idea of if you take something out of the ecosystem, what does it do? What kind of chain does it break that you don't know about? So that's, that's kind of where I get my ideas is, is from things that I'm thinking about that are happening. Like, like, um, What's his name? Michael Crichton, who did Jurassic Park. 
he heard about the idea that there was a little insect in amber, you know, that was, was in a piece of amber jewel that had been, um, um, you know, preserved from way back in dinosaur times, and it was a mosquito. So they thought, well, maybe it had blood in it that was from a dragon or a dinosaur, sorry, a dinosaur, and therefore they could extract that. Maybe they could clone a dinosaur. And that was his, that was a theory that was in a scientific magazine. And he said, wow, let's write Jurassic Park. And he wrote Jurassic Park based on that idea, that one little idea that was in a scientific magazine. So that's the way our weird author minds work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when do I write? All the time. <laughs> All the time is the how is writing changed? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> That's okay. I, I yeah. I write all the time. I mean, every free moment that I have. And how has writing changed my life? You know, it isn't so much writing that's changed because I've had writing with me all the time, but marketing the books once that I got them published and online. That's a whole different issue because you need to. Um, you need to be more vocal. You need to be um, more outgoing. You need to be more aggressive. I have a hard time saying, I'm the best. You should read my books, you know, that kind of thing. And you need to be able to have that attitude so that you can get a following who will talk, kind of like AJ was talking about. You know, AJ says, if you want to spread the Effortless English group, you need to talk to your friends about it and say, hey, I'm learning English this way and it's really working for me. Why don't you learn it this way too? Look, it works. Well, the same thing with my books. I'm hoping that you folks who read them tell your friends and say, hey, this really worked for me. Why don't you give it a try because she's got all these books and I'm hoping that I can kind of like, okay, here's a phrase for you. I can pin my tail to AJ's kite, meaning that I can fly with him. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, I must ask you a little question. Uh, you know, I have uh, some cases that when, I, when I'm going to rest or just lie down on the bed, I have a lot of an ideas. You know, I have here a storm here. Uh, th uh -huh. Some thinking, you know, I think all the time. And when I, I have a good idea, I'm just coming up, jumping from the bed, and write it down. Uh, do, right. Is it happening to you too, as a as an as an author? Oh yes. In fact, mine make their way into my dreams. Wow. A lot of my stories come out of my dreams. And I keep a pad by the bed so that I can write if I do think of something like that. I can jot things down because a lot of times those things when I wake up in the morning are like, oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. But if I don't jot them down, then they're gone sometimes. And I don't like to let them escape if they're good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. So I will have uh, some <laughs> notebook and write it <laughs> by the bed. It's great. Okay, hey, how has writing changed your life? Um, I think just like I said that it doesn't, um, it hasn't really changed my life. It's, it's just that marketing has changed it. So that's what's important is just doing the marketing. Yes. Lots of hours in that. Yes, I agree. I agree. I also uh, telling to my customers that uh, as an owner business, we have two business. One is the uh, uh, the job that we have, our skills are actually, and um, and the second is to market our business. And this is the most part of. Uh, of uh, of our job of, of our business to market it, and so I, I agree. Definitely. Yes, I agree. Okay, so if you Definitely. if you were a dragon, what kind of dragon would you be? 
<laughs> oh, well, you know, Farloft is a part of me. The main character in my Farloft Chronicles, he's definitely a part of me. So I would be Farloft, and I would definitely be a Western dragon because they're beefier, you know? And I, so I, I, I would definitely be that. But dragons are just neat. They can be wise and they can be, whenever Far, Farloft, my dragon, tweets the last Friday of every month on my Twitter account. And it's amazing the interaction that I get be, tweeting as Farloft. I mean, people want him to take them for rides. They want him to sol solve disputes, all kinds of things. It's very, very interesting that they will talk to Farloft about things that you normally wouldn't talk to a human about even. So it's, it's nice to have him there to help me out. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I just uh, skip this question because uh, you actually told us that the most effective way to uh, right. yes is actually to listen and to to read. Do do you have a, a, something to add about this question as a native speaker? I really don't think so. Let's just get on to the presents. Okay. They're fun. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, so uh, let's give uh, our present. Uh, okay. Um, Theresa, do you want to uh, share your present here? Okay, so the audio book is available free online. I know this is a long, long website listing, but if, don't bother to take it down because when we get to the last slide, I'll tell you how to get to it. But it's um, an hour and 36 minutes. And then if you download the ebook for 99 cents off of Amazon, it's a Kindle, but you can get an app for your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, whatever you want. Um, if you get it and then read along with this audiobook, I think you'll find it very beneficial. The audiobook is done by a gentleman who was a radio announcer, so his pronunciation is very, very clear. And I'm going to I'm going to surprise you right here, including Naomi, because he doesn't know about it either, and tell you that I'm having the second book wow. put into audio form, and I'm going to have a lady do it so that you can hear the difference between the tone and everything of a female as opposed to a male, and it'll hopefully be available at the end of April or the very first part of May. So they're recording it right now and putting it in audio form for us. Wow, you, you really surprised me too. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> surprise. surprise. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, we are uh, waiting for it. <laughs> Good deal. Okay, great. So guys, um, my actually present, uh, I don't know if you all know our uh, Facebook group. Okay, I really uh, want to, uh, to, to push you to talk and uh, to improve your English by speaking. And you know, uh, I really, really admire uh, AJ, our teacher. I think he's great and uh, we should listen to him a lot and all the time. And uh, we are also here to, to improve and to speak and to open our mouth because this is uh, the, the way that I improve my English. And I want to thank you guys because without you, I couldn't do it. And I really thank you. And, uh, and thank you, Teresa, <laughs> that uh, I can, I can You're speak welcome. with you with a native speaker and, uh, uh, it's great. It's a great feeling. So guys, uh, uh, my, my present is uh, this link. I'm going to put it here on the, um, on the, on the chat. And actually this link, you can just, uh, uh, give it to, uh, to your friends and share it. And this link, you will get the link and all, uh, the link to our Facebook group, of course. And all uh, uh, about our activity, uh, of course, 
including uh, including these uh, uh, conferences, special conferences with Teresa. Okay, this is the link, and please, guys, please don't share the link directly to the Facebook group. Okay, it's I really want to help everyone uh, to to improve their English and to speak. And when they sign up on this link, they will get all my mails, and you will know exactly when and where we are going to have a conference. Okay. So it's very important that you sign up this link. If you are not uh, until now signing up this link, so please do it and share it with your friends. Okay, this is, was my present. And finally, finally, the questions part. <laughs> okay, the question part. Guys, um... I want to check if you uh, <laughs> if you uh, know and um, know how to raise your hand and you you get uh, you understand my direction about how to use it. So who wants to speak with Teresa? Who wants to ask Teresa? Please raise your hand and if you can do it, just uh, write me. Okay, Jeff, you are the <laughs> you are fast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, Jeff. Uh, uh, guys, if you can raise your hand, Maria, you second, and uh, please write yes or me. It's okay too. Uh, okay, Jeff, you are first, and you are uh, the the first that's going to ask questions. I'm going to open your microphone. You are going to have a window, so please just click on the allow button, okay? It's a green V. So, uh, click on it and you are on. Jeff, I hope you have a, a good camera that you, we can see you and a good microphone that we can hear you. <laughs> uh, he says he wants Maria to be first. Okay. Let's see, Jeff. Ah, there's Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hello, everyone. Can you hear us? Can oh, you there hear you are. <laughs> yes. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Can you hear me, guys? Of course. Clearly. Hello. Yes. Hello. We can hear you. We, we can hear you, Jeff. All right. Good. Yes. Please ask your question. Alright. Okay, okay. Good. <laughs> Actually, I don't really have a question. <laughs> I just want to say hi to both of you. And Teresa, hi. Hi, Jeff. Nice to meet you. Whereabouts are you? Uh, yes? Jeff? Okay, so Jeff. I guess. Uh, Hello. Yes, I guess you can't hear us, and uh, there are a lot of uh, problems, uh, technical problems. So I'm going to uh, go to to the other one. Actually, I can. Actually, I can hear. Okay, you. great, great. So. Can you? So, what country are you in, Jeff? Philippines. Philippines. I live Philippines. in Philippines. Very good. And how long have you been studying English? Yes. You, just the little bit that you're saying seems very fluent. Uh, since I was uh, a great uh, a child, I mean, grade school. Very good. So you're bilingual then. But, uh, yeah, yes, yes, uh, we've been speaking English since we were little kids, and these are actually the second language. Okay, okay, great, I see that. Actually, there's a one question that I want to ask, yes, Teresa. Yes, yes. 
please. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Theresa, what's with the dragon? Why you love uh, dragon to be the characters in your book? I've always liked dragons. I think dragons are really wise. I don't see them as being evil things like a lot of writers do. I see them more as being almost above us in their philosophy because they've been living for such a long time. They've experienced a lot in their lifetime that they can give, that gives them a lot of deep wisdom. And so originally the very first book that I wrote called James and the Dragon, the reason it's called James and the Dragon is because I have a nephew whose name, it, his name is James. He was nine. And he was having some issues at school. He was being picked upon. People were stealing things from him. And a, a lot of times he would give things away that um, he, w he really shouldn't have given away. They were, you know, they were maybe things that his parents had worked hard to get a hold of for him, even like new coats and things like that. And so the, the first book was, um, Farloft, the dragon, telling stories to this boy in the cave that he had rescued in order to make the point that, you know, you need to respect other people's property, you need to be a good friend, you need to be honest at all times, so that hopefully James, through the stories in the book, would get the impression that this was the right way to act. So it was a teaching, but hopefully not preaching book, because you don't want to talk down to your readers. If you do, then they're just going to throw the book to one side. It's no good. It's got to be a good story. It's got to be something that they want to stick mm. with. Well, Did that help? Mm, I see. It's uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, OK. Uh, and one last question. OK. I would, what would be your advice to us who are not a uh, native speaker of English to to be uh, to acquire effectively the English? I think reading is the major thing because there's so many options out there to read. Um, so doing as AJ says in the effortless English to read all the time. But also, I think, and he's also put it forward too, is that watching movies or listening to music is always a great way to learn as well. So that, because I mm -hmm. think movies in particular are very cutting edge. You hear the slang that you maybe would run into in the country, whereas you normally wouldn't hear it in a book in your mind as well. You know, even though it might be written in an idiom like that, you wouldn't necessarily know how it was used. But if you see it in a movie, then you can put the connection together of what the situation was and why they said it. OK. Jeff, okay. have you got your answer? Okay. Thank uh, you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yes. Okay. Let's go. Thank you. Let's go to the next question. Maria, I'm going to uh, open your microphone, and you're on. Maria. Hi, Maria. Ma Maria, can you hear us? Uh, oh, yes. Here she is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, good evening, Noam. Good evening, Teresa. Nice to meet you. Uh, um, uh, I uh, only want to ask uh, from Teresa <laughs> to answer slowly <laughs> uh, okay. because I want to understand your answer. and. Uh, I a little bit scared <laughs> uh, because I want to improve my English and I it, and uh, I not uh, speak so good. <laughs> and oh, you're doing fine. 
Uh, my first question is uh, how you react and uh, how you act if you have uh, negative reactions or some critics from people uh, about your writing, about your books, if you have uh, the... I haven't had any problems with people being negative about the books. They've received really good reviews. None of them have been, been below fours and fives, which a four and five, five is the top for what you can actually be graded on Amazon as. So, but I think if I had a negative one, I would probably look at it and try to determine if there was substance to it, and if there was, I would try to rectify that. I don't know if I could actually do it in the book that they were being negative about because they're already published, but I could take it to heart and I could possibly do better in the next book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that help? If, if I understand you, you, you don't take it to the heart you need to understand what does it mean uh, for you and uh, you, you, you only want to improve your writing, yes? Right, right. I think, I think it's very important to not, to understand, yes, and to try to improve if there's some substance to the problem. But not, but not to make it, not to make it, um, not to get depressed about it or upset about it, because um, whatever you write, you've done the best that you can at the time. So once you've done that, it's out there for everybody to see. So the critics, when they talk it down or they say bad things about it then what you need to do is you need to take whatever they said, and if it was constructive, if it was true, then you need to apply that to the next book that you write. Okay, thank you. I, I asked this question because last time I, I feel passion to write, but not only write, I feel passion uh, to get a feedback from people, but I'm afraid to publish <laughs> what I write. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be afraid. Put it out there because as long as it's your feelings and what you're feeling, I think it, it's great credit to anyone who actually gets something published who actually puts it out there. I mean, you're putting your soul out there for somebody to look at. <laughs> uh, I uh, actually feel that I, uh, I put my soul if I write. Yes. Yep. Okay, thank you. And um, my, my second question, um, uh, if you have some rules or maybe secrets that helps you uh, daily in your life, uh, uh, to manage uh, like uh, like a woman uh, that work uh, like a businesswoman and like a mother and wife. Uh, I think. And, Go ahead. And to achieve uh, to achieve uh, that uh, to achieve what you want. I think the most important thing about everything, whether it's home life or whether it's work or whether it's being a mother is the attitude that you have. If you have a positive attitude and if you try, I mean you don't have to constantly be smiling and always up and all this because we can't always do that. I mean I'm a caregiver to my elderly parents and there are times when I want to cry, you know, but the thing is is that there's times that you need to smile. Yeah. So the thing is, is that if your attitude is positive, that's what's important. Wow. Thank wow. You're so strong woman. 
וואו. I have tears in, in my eyes. <laughs> Sorry, I get emotional. No, it's okay, it's okay. You're awesome. <laughs> now, now, I, now you put your soul in, in your mind. Definitely, definitely. You have a big soul. <laughs> a big soul. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Maria, thank you for your uh, question. And, um, oh, tell us, where are you from? I know where are you from, so just uh, uh, tell the people here. Where are you from? Uh, I am from Israel. I, uh, half of my life in Israel and half of my life in Ukraine. Uh, when oh, I was wow. 18, I came to, in Ukraine to Israel and now I am here with my parents and sisters. Okay. So do you speak three languages then? I speak uh, Russian and Ukraine. I speak Hebrew and uh, English is uh, third, third uh, language for me. Oh, that is marvelous. You are, you are an inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so we are going to the next one. Wow. Wow. Okay, I, I just uh, need to take uh, a breath. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go to the next one, guys. Uh, I really want to say just uh, when I'm open your your microphone, please start with where are you from? Okay. And uh, you can ask only two questions, not more, because I really want to hear all of you. Uh, okay, let's go to the other one. I said Catherine, Catherine. Yes, Catherine. You are next, and then we will have Max and Abraham. Um, okay, Catherine, you're on. Catherine, are you with us? Hi. Oh, oh, there she is. Hi. <laughs> I'm here. How are you? <laughs> How are you, Hello, Catherine? Everyone. Where are you from? Fine, fine. Sorry? Where are you from? Hi. I'm from Colombia. Okay. From I'm from Colombia. Um, yes. Uh, now I'm living in Dubai. Um, Wow. Uh, since uh, for for one year only here in Dubai. Wow. And um, and now I'm I'm married and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, um, hello, Teresa. Thank Hi. you for <laughs> for this opportunity for all of us, and uh, I'm very happy to to know you. And hey, hi, Noan, and <laughs> thank you, thank you for, for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay, it's my honor. Uh, okay, yes. um, I want to ask you about, I, I have only one question, uh, only one question, um, because uh, Jeff uh, said about one of my questions about the dragons, uh, and it's very clear for me. But I want to ask you about who is your favorite uh, writer, who is your favorite uh, author? Oh my goodness. That would be a hard one to answer because I am a voracious reader. I read everything I can get my hands on. In fact, if there's a cereal box on the table during breakfast, I'll read the back of the cereal box. I mean, I'm, I'm bad about reading. Um, most recently, I read a really good series by a lady called Cheryl Lynn Kenyon, and it was paranormal. It's vampires and werewolves and that sort of thing, but she has created a really cool uh, mythology that she's built that came all the way out of the Greek gods and somehow got all confused in our modern day so that she justifies the fact that there are vampires and werewolves among us and we just don't know about it. 
So it's modern day, and it's kind of cool. It, there's probably about 15 volumes of it, and I really enjoyed that. Um, my favorite author, one of my favorite authors, is a lady uh, called Burl Markham, and it's B-E-R-Y-L Markham, M-A-R-K-H-A-M, and her, her book was called West with the Night, and it's a nonfiction, and, it's, and she was a very strong woman who grew up in Africa during the um, time when the British Empire was in charge of a major part of Africa, and she became a pilot, and she spotted game back in the days of hunting, but she... She tells her whole life story, and she was actually attacked by a lion and lived through it. She flew across the Atlantic before Amelia Earhart did, but she didn't get credit for it because she took a crash landing. She nosedived, what they call nosedive. She hit the nose down um, in Nova Scotia, and they considered that a crash landing, so she didn't get credit for flying across the Atlantic. But it is a marvelous book. It has beautiful, beautiful language in it that is very, very visual. And it's one of my favorites. It's a book that I keep several copies of with my name in them, and I pass them out to folks and say, here, read this and give it back to me so I can pass it on to somebody else. It's one of those books. I really like them. And my other all-time favorite is um, James Harriet's um, all Creatures Great and Small, and it's about a veterinarian. It's also nonfiction. It's about a veterinarian in um, Scotland who takes care of small and large animals, and it's so heartwarming. It's one of those books that when you read parts of it, it makes you so sad because the animal died or something, and you cry, and you have to put the book to one side. But then there's other parts that are so funny, so hilarious, that you laugh so hard you cry, you have to put the book to one side. But um, one of the parts in it that I liked a lot was a lady who had very poor eyesight. She wore glasses that were really thick, and her little bird dies, and she calls because she can't see the bird very well, so she calls the vet and she says, the bird stopped singing, I don't know what happened, and the vet comes and the bird is like feet up in the cage, and it's dead, obviously, but she can't see it, and he's afraid to tell her because she's a poor, lonely old lady, so he takes the bird and he says, I'm going to take it. And I'll, I'll, you know, see if what I can do about it. And he spends the whole rest of the day trying to find a bird the same color that's alive. <laughs> and he brings it back to her and puts it in the cage. And she calls him up the next day and she says, oh, James, the bird sings so much better. I don't know what you did to it. <laughs> so it's a wonderful book. It's very heartwarming. So that's, that's two of my favorite books. Oh, nice. Interesting. I'm going to 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 find one of these books, and then I'm sure you maybe can. I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to 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 find one of these uh, books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stevens. You're welcome. Thank you, Noah. Uh, Catherine, uh, you are welcome to our uh, Facebook group, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, are you a member in our Facebook group? Yes, yes, uh, I, I am a member uh, a few days, no, oh. only <laughs> one week maybe, no more. Oh, okay, great, great. Okay, thank you, thank you for your question and um, see you. <laughs> see you, see you guys, bye. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the other question and uh, Max, are you ready? Okay. By the way, guys, and uh, most women, uh, it's a, it's a, with the woman day. Max just write it and uh, um, Teresa, I want to say that uh, 
you are the most incredible woman that I ever, ever <laughs> met. Okay? Oh, no, you make me cry again! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, <laughs> after my wife, uh, but you're the most uh, incredible woman, and I really want to give you a big hug from the Woman Day. So, just take it. <laughs> okay, let's go on. I love virtual hugs. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, Max, you're on. Max? Just a minute, I'm going to open your microphone, and you're on. Hello, Max, how are you? Please tell us, where are you from, Max? Okay. Hello. Oh, there he is. Hi, Max. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling very well today. <laughs> oh, oh, immediately, <laughs> my son arrives. <coughs> no, I'm not, not now, no, no, no. You, you caught what you're <laughs> you uh, caught what your wife everybody. had, huh? Yeah, now is my time, now is my time. <laughs> After a week she was, she was sick, now is my time, and I'm done. <coughs> I'm sorry, sorry for coughing. Uh, Teresa, uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, thank you, Noam, for hosting us here. Uh, Welcome. I gotta say that uh, this conference has been very, very good, the, the best one. Uh, it's hard, hard to say this, but we don't know, but it's better than the other one, but it was success, not just for a lot of people that is joining in, but even for, uh, not not for Teresa's crying, but for the emotional uh, part that I I felt here. So, I don't want to, I didn't want to ask, my question is, Simple. I just uh, wanted to um, to know what Teresa is. Um, what, what what do you feel to meet uh, your readers eye to eye? Uh, I don't think that is uh, is is usual for for a reader for for a writer because uh, most of the time, yeah, perhaps it happens in uh, in uh, you say that uh, when you 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 write a book and paper, you go around and. Uh, uh, in in the um, bookshops and you sign the the books and so that, that's an occasion to meet uh, eyeball eye, eyeball eyeball uh, your your uh, your readers. But I think that uh, is something that is unusual at least um, and is the, the good part of the internet that gives you the opportunity to meet. Uh, how did you see how many people from uh, different parts of the world are all together with you? Uh, in your living room, I'd say. So, this, this I is my think, question. <laughs> I think it's wonderful because, like you said, a person who actually gets published in paperback or hardback, a lot of times they do book tours, and so they get to meet their public because they're doing signed copies of it, that sort of thing. So this is wonderful, and, and I'd like to tell a little story on you, Max. Max is one of my oldest friends on Twitter, and we met through a mutual friend, Carla, who also writes books in um, Italy. Oh. And Max really surprised me one night because he tweeted me and he says, I'm in bed reading your science fiction book. And I went, oh my goodness, how incredible is that? There's a guy in Italy laying in bed reading my book. I just thought it was so fabulous. And Max and I have been friends ever since. So if you have, if you're on Twitter, any of you, if you're on Twitter, get on Twitter and let's talk. I love to talk. I love to chat. And I try to throw up nifty pictures and neat videos off of the Internet that I find interesting. And um, I, I'm not on there as much as I'd like to be because I have that 8 to 5 job. But I do, I'm on there in the morning early, usually between 6 and 7 my time. And then I'm on again in the evening for probably about four hours when I get home between 5 and 10 o'clock at night. I have to cook a little dinner in there. Unfortunately, Daddy's always hungry. I don't know what his problem is. <laughs> but I love, I love meeting my readers, and I love knowing what they think of my work. 
And even if it's even if it's something that's constructive that they want me to address and say, well, you know, maybe I didn't like the way this went or something because I had one writer on Twitter said, oh, well, I expected more out of the wizard in the Farloft Chronicles in the second book. And I thought, well, okay, I could see how she might have expected more, but unfortunately she didn't get any more. <laughs> but I love meeting you guys. This is great. I'm hoping that I can drop into some of the other conferences with Naomi's conference room now. He's got such a nice one here. And we can chat, and you guys can practice your English, and I can lead you astray and talk endlessly. I'm great at talking endlessly. Of course, of course. <laughs> You're welcome, and I will arrange something uh, <laughs> to do it. You're welcome all the time here, Teresa. And uh, uh, Max, I, I want to thank you. Okay, Max, I want to thank you too. Because, uh, guys, I don't know if you know, but uh, because... Uh, of this great man, I just connect to Teresa. Uh, I know uh, Teresa. <laughs> so it was <coughs> the great man is wonderful <laughs> 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 weather today. Uh, yeah. Poor baby. So thank you, yeah. thank you, Max. That uh, yeah, Max, <laughs> okay, let's yeah, give him a hug too. Uh, <laughs> I put you all. Oh, and um, good Women Day to all, all of you, all the women, and to the chat room. Uh, I wish you all the best. It's your day today. Thank you. Even with, even with the time zone, the process is different, but <laughs> it should be, for all, most of us, should be the seventh, the, the eighth of, of marriage right. today. I'm not sure, not, right. I'm not 100% sure, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark, thank you very yeah, much. Okay. Thank you. You are great. Thank Feel you. well. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, uh, let's go to Avram. Avram, you next. And uh, guys, I really want to thank you all that you are still with us. We are one and a hour <laughs> here, and uh, I really thank you all that you are with us, and it's great. Um, Avram, I'm going to open your microphone and. Uh, you are next, Avram. Okay, I'm going to open your microphone. Just click on the allow button, and you can ask Teresa questions. Okay, but before I'm going to uh, open uh, Avram my, my, uh, microphone, I want to tell you uh, f s free uh, some uh, words about uh, Avram. Avram is actually my mental teacher, okay? He's a, a, a big man for me, and I really, really admire him. He's from Israel, too, of course. And uh, because of him, uh, I actually change my kind of thinking about uh, from the higher worlds, you know, um, uh, the, the higher worlds and uh, from the business worlds, uh, uh, and it changed my mind because you know when you want to 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 have a business, uh, you can get it if you're not ready in here. So he's the man that's responsible to switch my uh, thinking, the way of thinking, and to have my own business. I don't know if you know Teresa too that uh, uh, in the last. Ten years, I just work as a an employee uh, from the for the country. Okay, uh, I work uh, I work mm -hmm. at the post office uh, during eleven years. In eleven years and two months, uh, yes, in the last uh, in, in the in the beginning of this year, I just make my dream. True and fire my boss. <laughs> I just fire my boss, and I really want to thank this great man. That it's all because of him, and he just direct me because I believe, I really believe, guys, that we can't have a change if we really don't have a teacher or someone who leads us, uh, uh, especially. 
that uh, starts in our head, okay? In, so I want to introduce you guys and to uh, get online my mental teacher, Avram Nov. Avram, are you with us? Okay, he's always say that he is 18 uh, and he is 18 in his soul, but if you will switch the uh, the letters, you will get your age, his age. <laughs> Hi, Abram. Abram, are you here? <laughs> he went to to, <laughs> went to take something to eat. Uh, Abram, we can. Okay, let's say. Uh, He's getting his headset okay. on. Here we Abraham. go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you doing? How are you, Avram? I just spoke a lot of, about you and you didn't hear me. <laughs> you were eating pizza. You should share. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Avram. Um, Please introduce yourself. I already did, but you didn't. Uh, <laughs> but you didn't hear me. So please uh, introduce yourself, and uh, please uh, you can ask Teresa questions. I'm Dayan. Uh, I'm Dayan. Uh, boy here in this room, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and this is my first um, time I do uh, a, a public speech in English. Wow! In English. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, um, as a big uh, author, what do you want to uh, to um, achieve in uh, life uh, through your, uh, your writing? I would really like to be able to live off of my writing. I'd like to be able to stay home and write all the time instead of having to go to my job at the print shop. And so what I want to achieve is to be able to sell enough books and have enough people love my work that they want more books and therefore I can stay home and I can write and I can tweet and I can be on Facebook and I can enjoy doing the thing that I enjoy the most which is writing. I love to write. Okay, Abraham, did you get the answer? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What is the message in your uh, writing that you uh, want to give uh, to uh, people all over the world? I think all of my books, I think all of my books, the writing in it, is all based on a feeling of love. In the Farloft Chronicles, the dragon is always trying to explain and calm people down and get people to love one another. In the science fiction books, my two main characters, the human and the alien, become very, very good friends. Even though they're of different species, they have a bonding that goes on that they can't even hardly be separated from each other without feeling bad. They're like family to each other. And in my memoirs, which is about my mom and dad and I, there's a lot of love involved there. In the paranormal, the, the main character, the problem that he has is that in his human form, the woman that he loves doesn't think he's all that great. But when he's in his wolf form, she absolutely adores him. So it's about love, too. So I think all of them take a different aspect of love because I believe love comes in so many different forms 
that you can just you can write about it constantly in its different evolutions. Okay. <laughs> okay, Abraham. Uh, yes. Uh, your color. Your color is red. This is the color. And yours is. Color. My color. Uh, my uh, red. <laughs> also red. We're 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 very good that way together. Power colors. Yes. <laughs> you have the same color. Yo. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Avram. You were great. Uh, okay. I just gave everyone a hug, so I want to give you a hug too. <laughs> okay. Uh, th it was nice meeting you. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Avram, and we are going to the next uh, question. Guys, if you want to ask Teresa, please say yes, and uh, uh, I will open your microphone. <laughs> bye bye, Avram. Um, okay, who's next? Okay, I see that uh, there are no, there are no uh, questions. Um, Thank you all. Teresa, do you want to say something? Um, put the next slide up and let's show them the link oh, for yeah, the book. Oh, so, yeah. Sorry. Of course. Yes. Okay. That's all right. It was a, an emotional uh, conference, so I, I really <laughs> <laughs> forget <laughs> about the next slide. You forgot. <laughs> okay. So, so if you go to my website here, that's really easy to remember which is theresasnyderauthor.com. Remember that my name has an H in it, theresasnyderauthor.com. And if you scroll down to the dragon here, see the dragon on the right-hand side that has the headset on like mine? If you scroll down to him, right below him is the free audiobook. And then below him also is his blog where he talks about a contest that he's running that you could enter and you could possibly win a full set of his books. There's also um, interviews with him that people have done, which are kind of funny to read. Um, there is all of his books, and they will link you to Amazon where you can find his other books. All of my social media is on there. So if you want to follow me on Twitter or you want to follow me on Facebook, you can go there and you can look at it. And then the Amazon books, if you just go to Amazon.com and then go to the Kindle store and put in my name, all of my books come up on one page. So I hope to see you on Twitter, on Facebook, and I hope to see you here in the conference room again soon. I think that would be great. We could chat again. Of course, of course. Um, okay, so uh, guys, you are welcome to uh, to our the next conference. Of course, I will let you know. I want to thank you Seth, very much, Teresa, about your time and uh, about of being here with us and chatting and talking with us. It's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Applaud. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And I want to thank you all guys for listening. You were great. I, I really, I really, really proud of you because you ask very, very, uh, uh, important questions and really real questions. And I, I love you. And, uh, uh, see you in the next conference. Theresa. All right. Take care. <laughs> Bye. 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 All of you.